Okay, I think people are going to continue to come in, but I think we're going to just get started now. So, Assalamu alaikum and welcome everyone. My name is Seema Rizvi. I am a board member at IDRF and a member of IDRF's Young Professionals Committee. Thank you all so much for joining us today again for another edition of IDRF YPC's Health and Wellness Series. We are so excited for this fun interaction or interactive workshop today. Just as an FYI, uh, the chat is being monitored by Mariam, our Philanthropy and Special Events Manager. So if you have any questions uh, during the course of the event, feel free to put them in the chat. And we will also be sharing any links or resources that we would like to share with you in the chat as well. Um, uh, any questions directly related to the instruction of the art piece, we will try to address as soon as we can during the session. And all other questions or comments we will relay at the end of the session. Okay, just wanted to quickly mention that and get that out of the way. So uh, Ramadan Mubarak to each one of you. We hope everyone has had a very blessed, spiritually uplifting month. We know things are very different this year as it was last year during, during lockdown uh, with the pandemic. Uh, we were unable to meet with our friends and family to open fast, but physical distancing does not have to mean social isolation. So Alhamdulillah with the blessings of technology, we are all able to bring our community together and stay connected through programs like this. So we're very fortunate. Um, I'm so happy that there are lots of children joining us today with their parents. So this is extra special today that we can all join with our families and do something fun and creative together. I have two very lovely co-hosts with me today, my daughter Serena and Meher Siddiqui, who is the daughter of our very own YPC member Noman. They would like to say a few words before we get started. Serena? So, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Thank you for joining us for this workshop. I love doing artwork so I'm especially excited to make these eat cards. We hope everyone is ready to have some fun. I will mention the items needed for this workshop just to make sure everyone has what they need. Plain white paper or cardstock, fine tip marker, prefer preferably waterproof, paint, watercolor, or acrylic paint set. If you don't have paint, you can also use pencil crayons or markers. Paintbrush, flat tip, approximately one centimeter wide, pencil, an eraser, an, a ruler, a jar of water, paper, towel, or cloth, table covering to, permit, to prevent mess. Hopefully you have all of those items needed and we can get started shortly. Thanks. Thank you so much, Serena. That was very helpful for us to check to make sure we have all of our supplies before getting started. Now I'd like to turn it over to Meher to tell us a little bit about a special project IDRF runs to provide education for children in Gaza. Meher? Assalamu alaikum, everyone. If there's one thing in the pandemic that has taught us that we are very blessed here in Canada to have access to education at all times, even when schools are in lockdown. With technology, we are able to learn remotely. Although we miss seeing our friends and teachers in person, we at least still get the opportunity to keep learning in Gaza. That is not the case. Did you know half of the population is 14 years old or younger? There's poor quality education and no access to important programming for kids like us. Through this project, IDRF will provide 7,600 children and youth with the opportunity to participate in many different programs at the Child Center in Gaza. Things like activities, courses, and workshops in, in visual arts, science, technology, and literacy. On that note, I will turn it over to Nabil, the director of the programs at IDRF, to tell you more about this very important project. Thank you so much, Meher. And, uh... It's a, it's a pleasure being here with everyone uh, this morning, and uh, I hope I can do our program just as much justice as you did. So thank you so much for, for speaking about it in such a great way. Uh, so for those who don't know me, I'm Nabil Ali. I'm the director of programs at IDRF, and I've been with IDRF for a few years now. And uh, today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about more about the program that, that uh, Meher was just talking about, which is our education project in Gaza. So as, as she just mentioned, the needs in Gaza are great. 
Um, and we know that due to occupation, due to ongoing conflict, uh, the needs are, are, are that much greater when it comes to the educational context. And education around the world, primarily for refugees, vulnerable families and communities around the world, uh, continues to be a luxury because they don't either have the resources available to get an education, um, organizations don't provide those funding opportunities to them or the places that they live don't have adequate education. Uh, so in the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals Agenda, education is number four, um, and it, it stresses the importance of um, equitable, um, inclusive education for all, primarily for, for women and children who oftentimes get the least amount of support when it comes to that. So through this project, uh, what we've decided to do as an organization is work with our local partners, AM Catan, and to think about what it is that we want to do with, with the children that we're working with there and how do we provide them with educational support uh, that they most need. So to start, we said, hey, let's think about some of the key pillars that, that make um, an important and inclusive educational space, especially just kind of taking into account the ways that things are in, in the global north, thinking about cultural, reading, science, and IT. So what we did as an organization is we said, hey, well, we're trying to incorporate it by leveraging technology technology and by thinking about different areas and that technological you know incorporation allowed us as an organization to pivot during the pandemic so what we did through the project was is we've supported over 10,000 children so far by setting them up through a digital platform where they're able to connect uh, through their local library networks and get access to different subscriptions for to increase their literacy right so we're looking at the reading and writing across the board we then thought about how do we ensure that the children remain creative um, and engaged through visual art so what we've done through one of our other projects was we've set up um, an arts event where we brought we had the children draw art that they felt passionate about we brought it here to Canada and we sold it at an auction and the proceeds from that went towards a project. Um, and the children oftentimes get an opportunity to draw um, art that they feel passionate about while they're advocating for something that they feel most, uh, that, that is most in need. So in Gaza in the past, children have advocated for things like electricity and the impact that a lack of electricity has had on their ability to learn and get an education. So what we did is we, we were able to kind of ensure that they drew art around that and we and we brought their art here to Canada. So through this project, they're not only just, you know, expressing themselves through visual arts, but they're also advocating for the things that they, they feel really confident about. The other component of the program is really around our, our science area. We know how important it is for children to, to get an opportunity to tap in to uh, technology and think about science in, in, in new ways through experimentations, through observations, and thinking about how they can come to real conclusions and seeing what the impact of that has. So we've been able to incorporate science courses throughout all of our programs, and it's really made a large impact across the board. So through this program alone, we've not only helped them through basic uh, core courses such as math, English, science, and, and IT, but we're thinking about how do we incorporate new areas, right? Bringing in computers so that they have that technological touch to everything, right? Or how are they advocating and finding their voice across the board? And then outside of schools, are they connected to different networks? So during the pandemic, we we're able to leverage their networks via different libraries, and they're able to then receive all the services that they needed while at home, and we were able to get them any technology support that they needed. And we know that that remains an issue. So whether it's helping them with homework, book clubs, and things of that nature, we were able to get that program off the ground. So all in all, this project has been really impactful and I'm glad so many young folks are here with us today to, to understand and see the impact of this program. And, you know, on a day like today, um, when you hear about what's going on in the news uh, in a place like East Jerusalem, um, it, you know, it makes us all have a bit of a heavier heart. So we as an organization um, ha have been really monitoring closely what's going on in East Jerusalem, uh, both um, uh, through the, the attacks that, were ha that happened at at Masjid al-Aqsa, in addition to what was going on at Sheikh Jarrah um, over the last few days. So as an organization, we saw the impact. Over 200 people were impacted uh, through clashes um, where Israeli forces were, were attacking innocent Palestinian civilians who were either praying or, or protesting peacefully. Um, and they were attacked with rubber bullets, uh, stun grenades, and things of that nature. And it's really impacted over 200 people. Several of them are impacted in, in, in severe ways. Uh, some have lost their vision. Um, and we're supporting these hospitals. So we're currently supporting two field hospitals and one main hospital in East Jerusalem. Where we're providing immediate healthcare services. And, and, and we know that this project will make an immediate impact, especially given the time of year it is and, and the needs being so great in East Jerusalem. So there will be an appeal page ready fairly soon. And you can see that on our website on IDRF. And, and, I, and I hope that you know we can support that as well. But overall, education is just as important as any other need around the world. And, and, and we hope that uh, through this initiative and through this afternoon, we'll be able to raise some funds for that.
that project. So um, I'll pass it over to the next speaker now. Thank you, Nabil. It, it would be great if we all could come together to help out these kids in need. Meher and I are pledging to donate $20 of our Eid money to help these kids in Gaza have an education they deserve. Right, Meher? That's right, Serena. We would love it if you all joined us. No amount is too small. Thank you so much, Meher, Serena, and Nabil for telling us about this very important project. You're very right that we have a lot to be thankful for here, and the best way to show our gratitude is to pay it forward. That just means we're paying a kindness or blessing received with a good deed to someone else. So thank you both Serena Meher for your very thoughtful and generous donation. And if anyone would like to donate to this project, you can do so at Sukaina's Launch Good campaign. Mariam will, Mariam will put it, uh, the link in the chat and um, it's, it's, it's there on the screen as well. Okay, so the moment we've been waiting for, let's get into the fun and get our creative juices flowing. With Ramadan coming to a close and Eid right around the corner, we have a very special program for you all today that we are so excited about. I'm so honored to introduce to you an amazing and very talented artist. Her name is Sukaina Walji Kareem. Parents, you can find her on Instagram at art underscore by underscore SWK. You can see uh, the, the screen has uh, the handle so you can give her a follow and show her some love and see some of the amazing artwork she creates in that space. She is a Toronto-based artist whose work consists of digital art, painting, and sketching. Sakena holds a bachelor's degree in fine arts from York University. She teaches drawing skills, portraiture, uh, fluid art, and landscape art classes at local community centers. She also organizes and leads social painting events for all ages. She's a dedicated artist who loves to help others tap into their creative potential and discover the inner artist from within. The unique thing I love about Sukaina is that she intertwines the practice of mindfulness within her art sessions. So there's a real therapeutic element to her workshops. So you're all in for a very big treat today. Thank you so much, Sukaina, for being here with us and sharing your talent. I will turn it over to you. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Seema and IDRF Canada for having me totally. I feel so blessed to and honored um, to be instructing this mindfulness Eid making card um, workshop with everyone who's joined us today. Um, so before we start the session, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of how the session is going to be conducted. So uh, basically, um, we begin with a short mindfulness breathing exercise, and it's going to be accompanied with light stretches just to get our bodies a little loosened up. Uh, it's not going to be long. Um, and then I'm going to basically guide you step by step through this uh, drawing exercise. I'll be asking you either to say out loud or even just whisper various affirmations as we go along. Um, and the purpose behind this really is to help you challenge and overcome any negative thoughts that may be lingering in your beautiful minds. And hearing yourself say positive words allows you to really um, start believing um, in what you say, right? And it also actually creates more of a positive impact and change. Um, so this workshop is not about drawing a perfect Eid card. Um, I don't want you to feel um, anxious or worried if your card doesn't look exactly like mine. The purpose is for you to just have a peaceful experience and to create something that really speaks to you and that is uniquely your own. Um, and really what I want us to think about is that um, I want you to feel this like surge of creativity inside of you. And I want you to remember that um, we've all been blessed with our own creative path. And by the most wonderful creator and artist of all, Allah, right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to begin. So let us begin. And I want you to sit nice and straight. I want your shoulders to be kind of put back a little bit. And I want you to place your hand on your heart, okay? And I want you to feel your heart breathe, okay? And I want, to, I want you to feel your chest going up and down slightly as you're breathing, okay? And I want you to say, I'm grateful to feel the air in my lungs and the beating of my heart, okay? And I just want you to think about how amazing these organs are in our body and what a masterpiece that truly exists within us. Okay, and I want you to close your eyes, close your eyes, 
And in my on my instruction, I'm going to tell you, I um, want you to basically breathe in from your nose. You're going to hold your breath. And then I want you to exhale. Okay. But your inhale is going to be shorter than your exhale. All right. So let us breathe in, hold, and exhale from your mouth nice and slow. Again, okay. breathing in. Hold. Sula. Nice and slow. Last one, breathing in. Hold. And exhale, nice and slow. I'm not. I'm muted. Oh, sorry. Was I muted? No. No. Okay. Sorry. Just ask me to um, mute my unmute myself. Okay. Um, so now that we've done our three breaths, we're going to do these light exercises just to kind of warm up our upper back. Okay. And it's going to involve our shoulders. So what I want you to do, because a lot of times when we're creating work and we're really in the flow of doing um, what we're doing, creating, no. we don't really pay attention to how our bodies are positioned. And then we end up feeling really sore after like an hour of creative work. Right. Well, anyways, I do. Right. Um, so what I really like you guys to do is sit up nice and straight again. And I want you to take your shoulders and I want you to rotate them forward five times, okay? So putting your hands on your side, shoulders back, ready? And just rotating your shoulders five times. Two, three, four, and five. And then what we're going to do is we're going to also rotate backwards five times, okay? One, two, three, four, and five. Excellent. We're going to take our hands now because we don't really realize how much pressure we put on our hands when we're creating, right? So what I want you to do is exercise your hands by kind of putting them together like this, side by side. All right. And we're just going to sway our pinky finger back and forth, our ring finger, the middle finger, index, back and forth and then our thumb if you experience any pain then please stop okay once you're done that i want you to clasp your hands together apply some pressure and release we'll do that one more time and release okay awesome and what i'm going to do is also just to create a more relaxing experience i'm going to um play some um just some aura sounds um, if you don't mind. And before we start actually creating now, I want us to begin with the intention to create with an open mind and an open heart, okay? And I want you to come out of this experience just feeling at peace and at ease, okay? And happy with what you create. So what we can do is we can spotlight um, my other camera and then we can start. Fantastic. All right, so I'm going to go over really quickly. Um, so you should all have a plain piece of paper, just a normal eight by 11. And you're going to, I'm going to just go over how to fold your card so that, fold your paper so that you can create your card. So you're just going to fold your paper in half, okay? Making sure the corners are all meeting. Then you're going to fold it again in half. You want to make sure all the corners are meeting once they do. There we go. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, um, just so that I know everyone's following along, I want you to give me a thumbs up if you're done. If you've made your card, I want to, I want to see a thumbs up so I know that we're all on the same page, okay? I'm waiting for those thumbs up, those thumb ups, <laughs> the thumbs up. Okay, fantastic. 
So most of you are already done with your folding of your cards. We're just waiting on a few more people. Okay, fantastic. And I want you to get your pencil ready now, okay? And what we're going to create is we're going to create a border. See how I created a border right here? It's going to be a centimeter wide, okay? So basically what you're going to do is you're going to just measure out a centimeter from the sides and the top, but you're going to leave the bottom empty, okay? So no border, no border at the bottom, all right? So you can do that. So what I do is I put my ruler and I make about three lines, three little guidelines. Just to make sure that I'm guaranteed a straight line. And I want you to work in pencil for this, okay? I'm working in pen just so that you can see my lines. Oh my gosh, you know what I realized? I didn't even show you what you're going to be creating. So I'm going to show you right now. So this is basically the Eid card that you're going to be creating today. Okay, everyone? All right, so notice that there's a border and that's why we're, we're creating that guideline so that we don't go over, okay? I'm taking your time, no rush. being mindful of you know your breathing making sure you're breathing nice and easy and as you're creating these borders remember i was going to tell you to say some affirmations out loud or you can even just whisper them I want you to say I am thankful for every mistake I make because that helps me grow I am evolving so you can just say I am evolving I am evolving okay and when you're done your border I want to get I want to see a thumbs up. Let's see who's with me. Everyone done? Thumbs up. Just waiting on a few more thumbs. Okay, a few more people are just waiting for their thumbs, their little thumbs. Okay, fantastic. All right, so we're going to go on to the next step. The next step is going to be creating these lights, okay, right? And I'm going to show you the measurement for these lights. Now you don't have to follow the measurements. You can actually just go with the flow and create your own if you wanted, all right? But if you wanna be more precise, then I'm going to show you the measurements. You're gonna place your ruler right on the top of your card, okay? And the first marker that you're going to create, okay, is going to be at two and a half centimeters. All right, so you're just going to make a marker at two and a half centimeters. Okay. Right there. And then your next marker, you're going to put your, your ruler on the left side of your line, your border that you just created. And that's going to be, your marker is going to be at two centimeters. There we go. So now you should have a marker at two and a half centimeters on the top and on the left side of your border at two centimeters. So once you have that, we're basically gonna connect the dots, but watch me, okay? It's not gonna be a straight uh, connect. It's going to be an, a very, um, like a very, like an oval, slightly curved, connection okay so that's why if you want to do it in pencil would be great so that um, if you make a mistake you can always just erase and go over okay 
So this is what your card should look like right now. And give me a thumbs up if you guys are done. Fantastic, you guys are awesome. Good job. Okay, so the second markers that I want you to create for the second loop of lights. Again, you're gonna put your ruler right at the top, okay? And this time, actually, you're going to start at the first point, okay? And from the first point, you're gonna measure out, again, two and a half centimeters, okay? All right, so from the first point at the top, it's gonna be at two and a half centimeters. All right. Once you're done creating that marker, just wanna make sure, on the side of your card, you're going to make a marker of three centimeters. There we go. And then you guessed it, we're going to again connect the line, okay? But we're going to connect it not straight again. It's going to be curved, okay? So you should have two curved lines that look just like that. Again, I'm going to ask for a thumbs up just to make sure everyone is on the same page. Okay, beautiful thumbs. Thank you so much. Okay, fantastic. All right. Now, the third marker, okay, is going to be, we can just start our ruler right back on this line here and it's going to be at eight centimeters all the way towards the right, okay? So you should have a marker at eight centimeters. Okay. And once you've done that on the side here, oh, actually, no, what you're going to do, so you have a marker of eight centimeters, so you're gonna leave your ruler right at the top here, okay? And then you're gonna make a marker at one centimeter. All right, so you have a marker at one centimeter and then you have a marker at eight centimeters, okay? And then you're going to, again, you're going to create that curved line, okay? So again, you might wanna do this in pencil first, okay? Go nice and slow. So you should have a card that looks something similar to this. Okay. And as you're finishing that up, I want you to say to yourselves, I am grateful for Allah's mercy and forgiveness. I am enough. I am grateful for Allah's mercy and his forgiveness. I am enough. And give me a thumbs up if you're done your three lights. Awesome. Again, beautiful thumbs. Thank you so much. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create these little lights. Okay. So notice how they're little half circles spread out. Okay. So you can start from always work like one at a time. So the first line that you created, you can create your little lights. You can create them as big or as small as you like. And if you're worried about spacing and you want to know a measurement, then maybe every half centimeter you could create a light or you can just eyeball it. Okay, so again, we're just creating these little loops. There we go. And then we're working on our last line. Okay, so your your page should look, your card should look just like that. Okay, and you know 
the drill, you can give me a nice thumbs up so we're moving at a pace that everyone can uh, feel caught up at. Okay. Awesome. Good job. Everyone's doing fantastic. All right. And so before we begin um, creating the next component, what I want you to do is say to yourselves, I realize that my creator makes no mistake. I am perfectly molded by the most high. I am beautiful. So if you can't say everything, just say I am beautiful. Okay. So what I want you to do now is see where this second loop is. So not the first one, but the second one. Okay. You can use your uh, pencil. I'm just using a pen just so that everyone can see clearly. And I want you to put your ruler right up against that marker. So the second point, okay, on the top. And I want you to go down, measure four and a half centimeters. Okay, so four and a half centimeters. If you go over four, that's totally fine. Remember, this is your own card and you're creating it uni uniquely. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? There we go, right? So you have one lantern string, okay? We're gonna create the second one. So see the second line right here at the top? Okay, we're going to create a second line and you're gonna line up your ruler against that marker and you're going to go down to five and a half. So what I find really helpful is I just make sure I go and make a marker at right at five and a half to make sure I don't go over and then I go up. Okay. And then I have my line. And now you're going to create your third marker and your third marker is going to be just a little bit out from your last loop of lights. Okay, so you can just maybe a centimeter over to the left. Okay, you can just make a little marker, you can just eyeball it, it doesn't have to be exact. And the measurement for this one is going to be two and a half. So you can just make your marker at two and a half and then go right up. There we go. So you should have three lantern lot. Um, lines right there all right so once you're done you can give me a thumbs up again so i know we're all on the same page oh fantastic zamina thank you for showing beautiful good job good job guys so where are those little thumbs no rush though if you're still working on your lines that's okay thank you zainab beautiful Fantastic. We're just waiting on a few more thumbs. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our lanterns. Okay. So we're going to start and I'm going to show you a picture of the lanterns just so that you have something to look at while you're creating this. Okay. So the first lantern we're going to create will start right right at the end of the line. You're going to make a small itty bitty circle just like that. OK. All right. Fantastic. And then what you're going to do is you're going to have see how this lantern has a little oval like a half circle semicircle. So we're going to create that. So I'm going to show you here. We're going to create half a circle right there connected to the bottom of the circle. All right, just like that. Almost looks like, you know, a moon hanging from a string. Okay. Awesome. And once you're done that, you're going to connect the semicircle, but it's not going to be a straight line. Okay, it's going to be slightly curved. Just like that. All right. 
And once you're done that, you're going to extend that line that you just created just by a little bit outward on either side. Okay, and I'll show you, I'll just kind of put it a little close up right there so you can see. So see how we extended the line outward just a little bit, right? Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to create a little curve on either side. So I'll show you right there. See how we have a little curve happening on either side? Okay. So once you've made that curve, you're going to connect it. Okay, so you're going to connect the two ends together. So it almost looks like, you know, a little spaceship floating on a string. Okay. Once you're done that, okay, you're going to go underneath this loop that you just created and you're going to go down. I would say if you want a measurement, um, centimeter, one and a half centimeters down, but you can also just eyeball it, okay, on either side. So two symmetrical parallel lines going down approximately a centimeter and a half, okay? And once you're done that, you're gonna connect the bottom. All right. And again, just like we did at the top, we're gonna to extend the line outward again from the bottom. And we're going to curve it a little bit. And we're going to connect those curved lines at the bottom, just like that. Okay. All right. Give me a thumbs up when you're when you've reached this this point. Hey, Sukena, I think there's a question from Maliha. Sure. She's asking how long. I'm not sure. Oh, how long. so yeah. So if you need a measurement, it's um, a centimeter and a half. So this line would be a centimeter and a half going down. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to make a little oval, a semicircle at the bottom, just like that. And then you're going to extend a line going outward on either end of the semicircle, almost like antennas, but upside down, just like that. All right, so I'll show you close up. There we go. This is what it should look like. And then you're going to connect a straight line going across. Okay. And once you're done that, we're going to create the little stained glass windows in the lantern. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the middle. Okay, and we're going to create a long oval, stretched out oval, just like that. See, so I'll show you. That's what it looks like. Okay, and you're going to do another two on either side. So we have three inside, okay? There we go. So that's what you should have on your page. This is what it should look like. Okay. And when that's done, you are just going to create these lines on these semicircles, see? And you're going to make sure that they're not straight lines, they're slightly curved, okay? Just like these ones right here at the top. So slightly curved lines connecting to and inside the semicircle. You're gonna do the same for the bottom semicircle right there, right? Just curved lines. There we go. And to add to a set, like um, a stained glass effect, inside these little ovals that you've created, you're gonna create just some, a few lines that are not connected, but they're just kind of going 
slanted up and down just to give an illusion of stained glass, okay? I'll show you a close-up, something like that, okay? So you have your first lantern that you've created. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you have finished that. Whoa, all those. Thank you, Zain Ahmed's team. Zain Ahmed. <laughs> Lots of thumbs there. Thank you. Fantastic. Awesome. Good job, guys. Thank you. Ada, beautiful. Ah, Ruba. Love it. Fantastic. Okay. So now we're working on our second lantern, okay? So this one right here. And before we do that, I want you to say to yourselves, my heart feels content knowing Allah is more merciful than I will ever know. I am loved. Say, I am loved, okay? So remember how we started with a circle? This time we're going to start with a small little diamond, okay? And so how we're going to do that is we're going to make a a triangle, okay, just like that. And then we're gonna make an upside down triangle connecting to the, to the triangle we just created. And that's gonna create your diamond, okay? All right, after you've done your diamond, created your diamond, you're going to again create this oval. Okay, that's going to be connected to the diamond. And again, you're going to close that off at the bottom. And you're going to create these lines, these curved lines inside this dome. Okay, and you're going to start with your pencil or your pen underneath the diamond and you're going to create these lines. They're gonna be curved, okay? So you can do two curved towards the left and then the other two curved towards the right. There we go. It should look something like that. Now this does take practice, so it's okay if you don't get it perfect, okay? And once you've done that, again, you're going to extend your line outward just a little bit millimeters and once you've extended that line outward underneath the dome you're going to create a little curve okay once you've created that curve on either end you're going to connect it okay just like you did with the first lantern And the lines extending downward from this lantern is going to be at two centimeters, okay? But you don't have to use a ruler if you don't want to, but if you do want to, it would be at two centimeters going down, okay? So this one's going to be a big lantern because this one's going to be at the forefront of the card. So two centimeters. So once you've created your line and you're happy with it, you're gonna connect it at the bottom. Okay. How's everyone doing so far? Everyone good? Thumbs up? Awesome. Thank you. All right. So once you've done that, just like how you extended that line going outward, you're going to do the same thing at the bottom here, just extending your line. There we go. And making that curve. And then connecting the line at the bottom. There we go. And then you're going to create that dome, but an upside dome, okay? Semicircle. There we go. And you're going to then create those curved lines in your dome, okay? So you're going to start at the bottom and you're just going to work your way up. There we go. And now we're gonna look at making those windows inside our lantern. So the first one was the stretched out oval. This one's going to be a stretched out rectangle. So we always start in the middle, 
okay? So you're gonna make a stretched out rectangle in the middle. Okay, there we go. And then you're gonna make two other ones on either side, okay? So that's what it should look like. So you have three stretched out rectangles inside this larger lantern, okay? And inside, inside the window of the lantern, what I want you to do is just create a few lines just towards one side. So I'm picking the left side and I'm just gonna make these little pattern lines just off one side of my lantern, just to get a, an illusion or make an illusion of some type of a reflection. Okay. So you can choose the left side or the, or the right side. Okay. And if you like your lantern just like this, you can leave it like that, or you could create, again, this shape. So a little extension going out from your dome and connecting it at the bottom with a straight line. And guys, we're ready for our last and final lantern. Beautiful, good job, Zamina, fantastic. So give me a thumbs up when we're ready and then we can all move on to our last. Oh, beautiful, thank you for sharing, guys. Zainab, fantastic. Haja, good job. Wasif, beautiful. Good job, my friend. Fantastic. All right, so let's start with our, continue with our last lantern. And before we do this, I want you to say, my heart feels content knowing Allah is more, oh no, I think I said that already. Um, I know Allah is there for me wherever, whenever I need his guidance. So I know Allah is there for me whenever I need his guidance. I am not alone. Okay, so with the small little lantern here we have off to the right side, you're going to start with a very small little circle, just like you did with the first one, connecting to the line. And you're going to make an oval again. And you're going to close off that oval. Okay, good job. Then you're gonna make those curved lines, as many as you want. I chose to make three. And then you're gonna make again, that little small extension at the bottom line. And so a line going outward and a little curve on either side. And then you're gonna connect them. So I'm gonna just bring it up close so you can see. Right, so it should look like that. And then you're going to connect the line at the bottom. There we go. Okay. And now see how these lines went straight, right? These, this line is going to go a little bit inward. Okay. So the first line, so if you want a measurement, it's going to be a centimeter or it can be a centimeter and a half, okay? And you're gonna work going straight, but you're going to curve that line short, very slightly, okay? And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So going down and curving your line slightly. So it's narrowing towards the end, okay? All right? And then you're gonna connect the two lines bottom and just like the first one you made those stretched out ovals you're going to do the same thing but they're going to be like long teardrops okay so they're going to be thin at the top and then a little bit oval at the bottom so think of visualize a teardrop so you're going to make a point right in the middle and you're going to create a little loop over so you have a little teardrop just like that. So I'm gonna put it up a little closer so you can see, just like that. Okay, fantastic. And you're gonna do two on each, so one on either side. So two more. Okay. And 
And when you're done, you're going to extend at the bottom, the bottom line here, just extend the line going outward just a little bit. So just make a line going out. And then again, followed by a slight curve. And you're gonna connect that curved line. Okay. Once you're done that, you're going to create a small little dome with lines inside. Okay. And then a upside down long triangle with a circle right at the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna show you here close up. All right, so you have that looped line at the bottom, a small dome, and then an upside down triangle with a circle right at the bottom. Okay, and let me know when you've completed all three of your lanterns with a lovely thumbs up. Fantastic. Thank you, Zainab. Thank you, Ruba. Thank you. Thank you, Zainab. Zainab Jaffer. Thank you. Fantastic. Good job, guys. You're following along very well. Awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create the word Eid, right? And it's going to be, the E is going to be in the shape of a crescent moon, okay? So what we're going to do is you can towards the bottom and um, connected to the line at the bottom left hand corner. Okay, um, if I were to measure where you would start, it would be, let's see. So from the bottom, so I have four centimeters. So what you can do is just so you know, a starting point, just kind of give yourself a marker of four centimeters. So that's how high your moon is going to be. Just a little dot, just so you know where to start, okay? Fantastic. And then what I want you to do with a pencil, if you're not comfortable doing it with a pen or a marker, you're going to create this shape of a moon, okay? Or just a shape of a semicircle or almost circle, but it's not quite a circle because we're leaving a bit of a gap. So it actually looks like a C. Okay. All right. So once you have that large C, we call it a C, I want you to measure out, say, a centimeter out from the middle of the C. So it can be a sun. Actually, no, let's do half a centimeter. So we'll do half a centimeter marker right from the middle of the C there. So you have a little dot at half a centimeter. Okay. And from that half point, what I want you to do nice and slow, following the curvature of the top line. Okay, you can watch me first. I'm going to go upward and I'm going to connect to the top of the C right there, just like that, okay? And once you've done the first half, you're gonna do the bottom, so starting in the middle, okay? And then you're going to connect that curved line to the bottom of the C right there. So you should have a crescent moon shape, just like that. And another affirmation I want you to say to yourselves is I am so grateful knowing that when I turn to Allah, he turns to me. I am important. So you can even just say I am important. Okay, so I just want to get an idea of who is done their crescent moon. Give me a nice thumbs up, everyone. Awesome. Thank you. Good job. All right. So to make this convert this moon into an E, we're going to create a line where that little point was that we created, extended outward. There we go. And then all of a sudden, and this crescent moon becomes an E. How cool is that? Okay, fantastic. 
and then we're going to do two bubble letters right and the two letters are going to be i and d and so we're going to basically create so just like how we created that extended um, oval right in the lantern the first lantern we're going to do the same thing so you can what you can do is just to make a line of how high you want your eye okay and you go and how thick you want your eyes you can have two of these parallel lines next to each other and then you're going to basically connect the lines but it's not going to be a straight line it's going to be a curved line okay curved line at the bottom and a curved line at the top there we go and then we're going to go to make the d now so we're going to create a straight line the same height of the eye okay and we're going to create a backward c inverted c connecting to that line right so you have a d there and we're going to create an inner part of an inner part of gap inside the d so it's a very small line just like that towards the left not quite the middle of the d and then again you're going to create a small inverted c connected to that line okay and then what i want you to do in all caps you're going to just write the word mubarak okay so in capital letters m u b a r a k so you have your outline and if you want to dress up your e for example, you can create, just like how we created these little lines in our lantern, the large lantern, you can do the, that same thing, but towards one side of your letter. So I would pick the left side, okay? So you can basically just create these slanted lines on the side of your E, just like that. And on the side of your I, and the side of your D. There we go. Okay. And let me know when you're done with a lovely thumbs up again. Awesome. Thank you. Sophia and Layan. Good job, guys. Okay. We have some people hard at work. Beautiful, thank you for sharing. Beautiful pieces, thank you. I'm so proud of all of you, fantastic. Looking better than mine, good job. Okay, so once you're done that, I'm gonna teach you how to paint, okay, um, your card, so. Thank you, Ada, beautiful. So what I want you to do now is, um, who is, I wanna know who is using, who is using paint? Just put your hands up. Okay, most of you you're, are using paint. Okay, fantastic. So I want you to know that um, if you're using paint because you just, did you go over your piece with a marker? Yep, you did. Okay, fantastic. So, fantastic. Good job. Thank you for sharing. So, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to paint um, your piece so that it looks something like this. But I'm going to give you a little idea of some of the colors that you can use. So, you don't have to use the same colors that I used. So, these are just some samples that I did, some combinations that I thought looked really pretty together. Okay, so we have the one that I used here with the purple, green, and blue. We've got gray, pink, and uh, yellow. So I'm going to put this up here just so that you can have a look, okay, and might help you decide what kind of a wash you want to do. So I just want to warn you, if you're not using, a, if you didn't use a waterproof marker, your paint may cause some smudging um, on your drawing, okay? And if you used um, a pencil, 
on your border here. Uh, what you can do is once your paint dries, you can start to erase um, your pencil marks, okay? And it should come off. And if you notice that there are white bits um, where the pencil mark is, you can always go over it with paint, all right? And if you feel that your lines are being faded from the, from the paint, then you can always, once the paint is dry, you can always go over them, okay? So I'm gonna go over now your painting. So are some of you using tubed paint or acrylic paint or is it like mine, the watercolor set? So if it's like mine, can you give me a thumbs up? Yep, okay. If it's not like mine, no problem. What I want you to do is have a little dish beside you or like a piece of um, maybe a paper plate or some type of a palette, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to grab your paintbrush and your water, okay? And if so, basically, if you are using uh, acrylic paint, you wanna dilute your acrylic paint with um, half uh, acrylic paint and half water if it the acrylic paint is not runny. If the acrylic paint is runny, then just a little bit of um, water will be fine just to get a very um, liquidy consistency, okay? So you want it not to be a thick blob of paint on going over top of your, your piece. And what I like to do is I like to turn my work on the side here. And I'm going to use the pink, purple, and orange combination but you're welcome to use whichever combo that you'd like, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to water down your brush. So we're gonna make sure your brush is in the water and nice and wet. You're going to pick the middle color, okay? So my middle color is going to be purple. Okay, and let me just show you when I'm putting my paint on my brush. So notice, it's nice and liquidy, right? Okay. And I want you to watch me first. As I'm applying it, I start from the top. I don't go over, over above the border that you just created. I'm gonna find the middle, okay? An approximate middle. And I'm going to go straight down and once I hit the middle of my card, I'm just going to leave my paintbrush and give it that little wispy stroke. Okay, so you're going to add pressure in the top. So in the beginning, you're going to add pressure. Once you get to the middle of your page, you're just going to let go of your paintbrush. Okay. And once you're done, you're going to create another line. So dip your brush back into the water. So Kena, there's a couple of questions about um, tracing uh, okay. before or after painting. And then people are asking, what about using markers? Yeah, so I'll go over that in a few seconds. Okay. I'm just going to go over the painting. And sorry, what was the question regarding the tracing? Whether they should have, because they use pencils, so whether they have should have traced everything before they paint or after? So, so what you can do is you can apply the paint a little bit right now with the pencil and see if you can see the pencil through the paint. If you can't, then I would just go over it with a darker marker. Because um, what can happen is to prevent smudging, what you can do is just um, create a nice wash of paint. And then once it's dry, you can go over your pencil marks with um, a nice marker. Okay, hopefully I answered that question. So once you've done your middle stroke, okay, you're going to do that again, connecting it to that first stroke that you created, okay? Again, you want it to be nice and watery. You're gonna make that stroke, so you're going to be creating some pressure. You're going to alleviate the pressure and go downward, creating that nice stroke right there. So you want it to be a little bit wide. Okay, so I have, it's almost like it's a, a little gradient. So it's darker at the top 
and then it's a little lighter and then it fades towards the bottom. And if you notice you have streaking, just go over that area with your brush and it should lighten up. Okay. And then you're gonna go in, wipe your brush, wash your brush. You can pat it down with a paper towel or you can wipe it on a piece of paper if you have a paper on the side. And you're gonna go in with your, your other color. So my color is going to be orange. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. So you're going to create some pressure, lighten the pressure and go down. And it's okay if it covers the E or E, it's fine. And if you still have more paint, you're gonna do the same thing. Pressure, lighten the pressure and down. If you need more paint, you can apply more paint. Just make sure you're dipping your brush in water, okay? There's a question, is there a combination of colors? You're just using one color right now, right, Sakina? So, um, yeah, so I just, I did show a few combinations of colors, color washes okay. that people can use. So I'm using um, the orange, purple, and um, red. So you have the option of whatever colors you want. I usually work in threes. I find that looks more presentable. Great, thank you. No problem. Okay, and again, to avoid streaking, just go over those lines, nice and slow. Another affirmation that you can say while you're doing your painting is, Allah created me, therefore I matter. Allah created me, therefore I matter. Okay. And so being mindful of the pressure that you're putting on your brush. That's the key to a lot of the painting that we do. And it's okay if you have a few streaks going downwards, that's fine. Noticing that once I'm done, that my lines are faded a little bit. So what I'm going to do is once my paint dries, and what you want to do if you're using regular paper, you want to make sure that if you've applied water and paint to your paper, you want to avoid it from curling up. So what you want to do is put it underneath something heavy. Okay, once you put, put it underneath something heavy, um, what will happen is it'll start to dry straight instead of curved and uh, wavy. Okay, and once you're done that, then you can look back at your work and see if you need to go over it, just over um, some of the lighter areas. Okay, and as you're working on that, I'm going to show you a piece that I did with marker. So this is another version, but you can also do it with marker. And I used three tones. So this is a light pink, um, a little medium tone, sorry, a light pink here, a medium tone pink, and then another lighter pink here. Okay, and it's going to be applied basically the same way. And I'm gonna show you here, if you're using marker. Just gonna take your marker and preferably use the side of your marker if you can, so not the top. Um, if you have an angled marker like this, you can just use the angled edge right here, okay? And you would apply the same method where you would start at the top in the middle with some pressure, right? Going down towards the middle, you're going to alleviate the pressure and quickly, kind of swiftly take your marker off the page. And then again, you're going to do that until you achieve the thickness that you want for that middle color, right? It's, it's a technique that kind of takes some practice, but once you get it, you can apply it to so many uh, different craft projects. 
okay? Just making those strokes. If you have pencil crayon, I'll show you. I'll show you a technique that I did with pencil crayon. So I did a little ombre gradient where I used the pencil crayon and I did a bit of shading. So I applied dark, medium, and light tones going down. And again, I created an ombre with a dark green medium tone and a lighter tone of green. Okay, and I can show you how to do that. So when I have my pencil crayon here, okay, I'm going to go back and forth. So if this is the portion that I'm going to be coloring in pencil crayon, I'm going to go back and forth. And I'm going to be applying pressure. Okay, going nice and dark. Okay, and as I'm starting to go downward, I'm going to be mindful of the pressure, release the pressure, and I'm going to notice that the gradient is getting lighter as I'm going down. Okay, and the lighter we go, the less pressure that we apply, you'll see the color starting to fade as you go down. Okay, so that's another technique you can apply if you don't have any paints on you and you only have pencil crayons or even crayons, you can do it with crayons as well. So those are the different methods. And remember, make this your own. So uh, the one in marker that I created, I after I did the wash in the markers, I filled in the domes. You can fill in all of the, do all of the domes and even the inner parts of the windows. You can even go in with glitter. So you can take some glue you can fill in the windows with glue or even just the crescent moon, the bubble letters. So there's so many different options. I want you to use your imagination and I want you to just create um, your own unique piece, okay? So I'm literally just guiding you. I just gave you a guide of how to create this piece. And then I want you to take it further because uh, I know you have many more family members um, in, in your home friends that you want to create um, a beautiful card for so you know make sure that you you um, create a card for more than one person hopefully um, I'm sure they would really appreciate it so I'm in a beautiful I love the color choices great job so take your time fill in the card oh wow gorgeous Seema your daughter is very talented Marshall good job Excellent. I'm excited to see Ruba. Oh my gosh, you guys created a masterpiece, mashallah. Beautiful, love the colors. I love how you filled in the background of the Eid. So that's also another possibility. Beautiful work, everyone. And I wanted to leave you with um, another affirmation um, and a note that I want you to say, and I've gotten this from Sheikh Azhar Nasser, where he has said, I exist not by chance, but by the will of, by the will of Allah and our loving creator. Without me, there would be a hole in the tapestry of Allah's creation. Without me, there would be a missing piece in the puzzle. I am important. All of you are important and you're special and you're so talented, mashallah. I'm so excited to see all of your cards. Beautiful, Ada, beautiful, good job. I'm sure you're gonna either apply color later on. Um, even if you don't wanna apply color, that's totally fine as well. Zaina, beautiful, gorgeous work. I'm sure your mommy and daddies and cousins and aunts and uncles are all gonna be so excited to receive this card. Beautiful job. Okay. So who's, who's done? You want to give me a thumbs up? Who's completed their card? Let's see. Fantastic. Good job, Meher. Good job. Fantastic. Great. Who had fun? You want to give me a thumbs up? Did you enjoy this? 
Yeah, I'm so happy. That's fantastic. Thank you for thank you, Zaid Gang. I was like a million thumbs up there. <laughs> thumbs up. Thank you. I love it. It's a whole group there. Awesome. You did fantastic. Okay, so I think that sums up our uh, card making experience for today. Thank you guys so much for um, joining me and I'm so thrilled and excited to see all your creations. If you wanted to share them with me, feel free to um, get your mommy and daddies or your mommies rather to um, you know, post it on their Instagram. They can tag me or they can even just show me um, send me a message with a picture of your beautiful card. I would love to share it on my on my stories. And Teacher. Thank you. So I think we're I think I'm done my portion, and then um, I think we're over over time a little bit. Teacher, you Thank you, Sakenoa. That was so much fun, everyone. Right? If you enjoyed yourself, uh, please give us a thumbs up on the screen. Uh, there's an emoji button in the bottom. And uh, if anyone wants to share their artwork, we can all sort of display our artwork if we turn our videos on, whoever would like. Just put it to the screen and we can all see the work that everyone's created. That was so much fun. Um, Sakina, I love this. I love, I've never worked with like watercolor before. So this uh -huh. is really so much fun. Uh, so you want to show yours too? Okay. Let's see everyone. Oh, I'm just gonna. Oh, wow. Such beautiful pieces. We have okay. such amazing artists with us today, Sakena. I know. I'm so impressed. You're That's such an fantastic. excellent teacher. Everyone really like followed your instructions. Oh, how beautiful. <laughs> and Huda. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. So Sorry, much. but my cam doesn't work. That's okay. That's okay. I love all the different colors that everybody used. Oh, everyone's used their own imagination. If anyone would like to share your artwork um, for us to share on social media, you can, uh, your parents can tag us at IGRF Canada and we can share them in our stories. You can also email them to Mariam. She'll put her email on the screen in the chat. Um, so, a huge, huge thank you, Sakena, to you. This was so great. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't just the the artwork, but it was the whole. You basically it was an amazing artwork, but you created a whole experience for us with the affirmations and the meditations and thank you. music. So you really helped us come into the present moment yes. with clean hearts and a clear mind. So thank you so much for that. Um, thank you to all of you who attended today and for your continuous support of IDRF and the work that they do. Um, we hope you all enjoy the workshop and uh, whoever you are gifting these cards to uh, will be so lucky to receive these beautiful pieces from you. On behalf of the entire IDRF family, we wish you all a very blessed rest of Ramadan and Eid Mubarak. Thank you. Mubarak, Thank you. Mubarak, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. You're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Beautiful Thank you. work. Okay. Bye. Bye. Stop this. Stop this.